We can also use power series to evaluate limits. So let's say that, for instance, we want to evaluate the limit at 0 of sine x minus x plus x cubed over 6 divided by x to the fifth. If you plug x equals 0 in this, sine of 0 is 0, and so you get 0 at the top, 0 at the bottom. So you have an indeterminate form of the type 0 over 0, and you might think, OK, let's use the rule of de l'hôpital. And indeed you can, uh, but, uh, and I encourage you to try to do it that way, and you will see that you need to use the rule of de l'hôpital five times until you can conclude, because you would have to differentiate uh, top and bottom five times uh, until you get, get out of the indetermination 0 over 0. So here we're going to look at a way to avoid this and, um, and get our answer a little bit quicker. We can use the fact that um, we have a power series representation for, for sine x and look at the first few terms in this power series representation. Um, namely, it starts with x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seven over 7 factorial and so on. So that means that looking at sine x minus x plus x cubed over 6, x cubed over 6 of course is the same as x cubed over 3 factorial. Then you have x fifth, fx to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial and so on. And therefore we can factor out x to the fifth and I have 1 over 5 factorial minus x squared over 7 factorial. The next term would be plus x to the fourth over 9 factorial and so on. So now, if I look at sine x minus x plus x cubed over 6 and divide by x to the fifth, what remains is 1 over 5 factorial plus a bunch of terms that have a positive power of x. And so as x goes to 0, all these additional terms that contain a positive power of x go to 0, and therefore the limit of my quotient is 1 over 5 factorial, which is 1 over 120. Let's look at a second example, limit at 0 of x minus arctangent x divided by x cubed. Again, when you plug x equals 0, arctangent 0 is 0, so you get 0 at the top, 0 at the bottom. So it's an indeterminate form, and you could reasonably use the rule of de l'hôpital, even though, again, you would have to iterate the process. An alternative way is to use the fact that we have a power series representation for arctangent. And... Uh, when we are evalu evaluating limit, we just need to look at the first few terms for the power series representation, uh, namely, in this case, x minus x cubed over 3, plus x to the fifth over 5, minus x to the 7 over 7, and so on. So, when we look at x minus arctangent x, what remains is x cubed over 3, minus x to the fifth over 5, plus x to the 7 over 7, and so on. And if we factor out x cubed, we end up with x cubed multiplied by 1 third minus x squared over 5 uh, plus x to the 4 over 7 and so on. In other words, uh, we have x cubed and then multiply by 1 third plus a bunch of terms with a positive power of x. So when we divide that by x cubed, we are left with 1 third minus x squared over 5 plus x to the 4 over 7 and so on. And as x goes to 0, all these complementary terms that all contain a positive power of x go to zero, and the limit is one third. A third example where we want to evaluate the limit of one minus cosine x divided by one plus x minus e to the x. As x goes to zero, cosine x goes to one, so the top goes to zero, and e to the x goes to e to the zero, which is one. So the bottom goes to zero as well. And we can use now the power series representation of cosine x and of e to the x. And again, what we're interested in is the first few terms. So for cosine x, we have 1 minus x squared over 2 plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial and so on. For e to the x, we have 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6 plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on. So we can write the first few terms for 1 minus cosine x. In this case, what would remain would be x squared over 2 minus x to the 4th over 4 factorial 
and so on, while for 1 plus x minus e to the x, uh, we would have negative x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 6, and so on. So when we look at the quotient, uh, for the top we can factor out x squared, so can we for the bottom, and what remains at the top is 1 half minus x squared over 4 factorial plus x to the fourth over 6 factorial, and so on. At the bottom, what remains is negative 1 half minus x over 6 minus x squared over 4 factorial and so on. So we have x squared that factors out both at the top and the bottom and we can cancel that out. And then what remains is at the top 1 half plus a bunch of terms con containing a positive power of x and they are all going to go to 0 as x goes to 0. And similarly at the bottom we have negative 1 half plus a bunch of terms that contain a positive power of x and they will all go to 0. Therefore, as x goes to 0, the top goes to 1 half, the bottom to negative 1 half, and the quotient, therefore, to negative 1. So our limit is negative 1. Now turn to the next video where we're going to look at more operations on power series to find power series representations for more functions.